So Shopify just released 150 plus new updates and 10 new free themes into Shopify. And in today's video, I'm just going to go through all the new updates and stuff like that. And if you don't know who I am, my name's Clayton Bates. I'm one of the only people on YouTube that is authenticated Shopify expert by Shopify and the websites I've built have generated hundreds of millions of dollars online. So I'd like to think I sort of know what I'm talking about. So let's jump into the video and see what's new on Shopify. All right, the first thing is that Shopify just launched 10 brand new themes for your, for your Shopify website. And you can actually make AI generated blocks and stuff in these themes. Now, if you subscribe and hit the notification bell tomorrow, I'm going to launch a video going through these three themes and actually showing you how they all work and stuff like that. Now, like I always say with AI and stuff like that, is this a good little foundation to play around with? Yes. I already went into the themes and tried to build stuff with AI and straight away everything broke. And the thing is like, it's a good starting block sometimes, but it can be really frustrating sort of thing. But if you've got a little bit of time to maybe spend 20, 30 minutes debugging the thing you want the AI to do, it's probably going to be a lot cheaper than hiring a developer and stuff like that. So there's some pros and cons, but the, the really big thing I think about um, considering I'm a developer and I build websites is that how much more flexible it's going to be for us because we sort of know the lingo and what to tell the AI. It might be a little bit harder if you're starting out, you're a beginner and stuff like that. But when you know the lingo and the right words, like everything with AI at the moment, it can really help fast track thing sort of thing. So I think that's really good, but it's definitely like probably two, three years away from being really good. And it's got some like little things here about like how it's putting the prompt, it's writing the code and stuff like that. And like I sort of said before, I tried to play around with it. Everything kept breaking. Um, I literally had to spend like 20, 30 minutes debugging uh, each thing every time it broke. And like I said, the next video tomorrow, um, I'll go into it in more detail and stuff, but I definitely think if you've got some time and low funds, like this could be a really good option for people starting out. And like I said, two or three years from now, this is probably going to be really, really good. The other thing it can do is you can actually like put all your brand messaging in, everything like that, and it'll generate a whole website for you. Now, I've been really vocal about this with people coming to my agency uh, to get a free video review. There's a link below, you can grab that if you want. Uh, going over tips and suggestions. And over the last probably six months, so many people have actually messaged me with AI generated websites. It's insane how many people have done it. And let's just be honest, it's not good enough yet. Two or three years ago, two or three years from now, it will be good enough. But the, the type of websites that the AI is generating yeah, it might save you a couple of hours or something like that. It might be better than you can actually do yourself. But once you start to get to like one, two thousand dollars a month, these AI generated themes are just not worth it. Imagine you're making like thirty thousand dollars a month and it's just not worth it. It's better to hire someone to to build the website at the moment because it's just so much lost revenue. Like I said, AI, when you know the lingo, you know the words, things like that you can really use it to your advantage. But at the moment, it's just not good enough. And tomorrow, I'm going to make that video and just go through, explain everything. Um, I'm not against anything like this. It's just like, this is just how the facts, this is just how it is sort of thing. The one thing I did really like about these themes is the color swatches. It looks really cool how they've done the color swatches and stuff. And some of the templates actually suit uh, fashion businesses. I reckon some, some fashion businesses on a low budget are absolutely going to love these themes as well. All right, so the next thing is called Sidekick. And the way I always think about Sidekick is like having AI inside your website. Instead of going to chat or deep seek or whatever, right, it actually is inside your website. And if you say, oh, you know, what's my best three best selling products? What's the marketing plan and stuff? It actually can pull all that data and stuff like that. And it makes it a little bit easier like to actually put that into AI at the moment would be a nightmare. So it's actually really good to have this inside your website. Like always, like I said before, the AI is a bit tricky sometimes, but once you know what you're doing, if you've got some time to play around with it, it can give you some really good advice. I know I sound like I'm bagging AI, but 
I really believe like if you use AI to your advantage, you can like turbocharge yourself. Like you can you can really move forward faster sort of thing. I always think, imagine 10 people that now are really good at using AI. It's like you now have like 200 people at your disposal sort of thing. So I, I always think it's our friend sort of thing, but it's definitely just not, it's not there yet. It's getting there sort of thing. All right, the next one is POS. So for retail stores, this device and stuff for the POS system. Now I'm really happy that they're making adjustments and making this better for the POS people. I know that Shopify is really pushing to get people to come over to Shopify POS and get some of the larger uh, businesses to Shopify. So I really like when they keep making adjustments and making POS better. Now, just a little thing, if you do have POS in your store, if you reach out to my agency, send me an email or whatever, um, I can actually send you some tips and suggestions on how to actually migrate to Shopify POS. All the struggles and stuff you're gonna go through all the best practices and stuff like that. Um, so just reach out to my agency. We'll send that over to you for free. Um, yeah, so we'll do that, no dramas at all. But yeah, it's, it's making it better. So thank you Shopify for making POS better. It helps a lot of our larger clients. All right, so the next one is the checkout. And I thought this was really, really cool what they did. So see how it's like shipping method, your order will arrive in two shipments. So it's like two items are coming from one location one item's coming from another location. A lot of our uh, our clients that we work with, they have issues with like shipping from different locations and stuff like that. So I really like how transparent and just easy this is because the one thing is like, you don't want to order three things, get two in the mail and be like, oh, oh, what? where's the other one, whatever. When it is coming, it's just coming from another location. And right here, it makes it really transparent because a lot of people, even if you write, oh, this ships from two locations, you send an email, this ships from two locations, a lot of people aren't gonna read that. And so even when you do that, a lot of people will be like, oh, where's my other thing, right? But if you're really transparent, this is very easy to identify that, hey, these are coming from two locations. So you can see it straight away. I actually, years and years ago, I worked for one of the biggest companies, online company uh, in Australia, they actually used to be bigger than eBay, like originally before eBay took over sort of thing. Uh, in Australia, they're bigger than eBay. And they had so many issues with this because what we used to do is when we packed up the orders, if someone bought 10 things, normally we would actually ship all 10 things in different parcels or some of them would come from different locations and stuff like that. So it was a nightmare for those guys because quite a lot of people would order more than one thing. A lot of our websites, a lot of people order more than one thing. Uh, a lot of people watching this probably doesn't really relate to you, but the people this does relate to are absolutely going to love this. All right, so the next one is selling from multiple businesses and entities. Now, this is just for Shopify Plus, exclusive of Shopify Plus. So most people watching this, probably 99.9% .9 of people watching this, it doesn't really relate to them. Uh, so we'll move on to the next thing. You can also get payments in multiple currencies and stuff like that now across Europe and Australia. So that's pretty cool that they've done that. All right, the next one, updates to region markets, customer accounts, work with markets. Most people aren't gonna be interested in this, but if you are interested, let me know in the comments and I'll make a video about it. Maybe even my, in my free school community, if you go over to there, I'll make a video about it. All right, so the next one, I skipped over a couple of things that I didn't think you guys would be interested in, guys and girls. Um, but this next one is smarter recommendations in home feed for shop pay. So I actually thought this was really interesting. I've noticed a lot more people using shop pay lately. So I thought that was really cool that they did that. All right, so the next one, markets now available in B2B. So I actually think a lot of people will be interested in this one, but exclusive to Shopify Plus and if you don't know, I haven't, I didn't say this earlier, but Shopify Plus is like the highest tier plan on Shopify. I think at the moment it's like 2,300 USD a month to actually have Shopify Plus. Uh, so like I said, most people aren't gonna be at that level. Right, so this one is really interesting to me. Min and max order limits. Set minimum and maximum order limits, value requirements for customers or B2B customers with free checkout block. So this is actually pretty interesting. The checkout block used to be exclusive to Shopify Plus, but I think now you can use it on any plan as well, which is pretty cool. All 
All right, so the next one is pick list in admin. So you can print the pin, the pick list by product or order, including SKUs, quantities, product images, speed up fulfillment via Shopify order printer app. So this is actually pretty cool that they did this. A lot of our clients that are you know making like 100K plus a month and stuff like that would really appreciate this. Like one of the things, like when you're packing up like big orders and stuff, you just want to make it easy. And what I found in the past with this app is sometimes it's not very easy. So I really appreciate that they've made some updates to this to actually make life easier. I know personally that Shopify is really trying to make your life easier. So that's why they're doing lots of these updates. They really want Shopify to be the best platform. And I think over the last couple of years, they have made quite a large amount of updates and they care quite a lot about making the experience really good for you. All right, so this one, I'm actually really excited about this. Consolidate view for delivery methods. This will be actually pretty good for some of our clients here. It looks like it's just made it so much easier, like fulfillment, use inventory at this location to fulfill online orders. How cool is that? I really like how they've done that, made it a lot easier. All right, here's another really, really good one. Flat rates for multiple location orders. Charge customers a single flat rate shipping rate when items ship from multiple locations within a single shipping profile. Oh my God, how cool is this one going to be? Like a lot of our clients, we actually use workarounds to do this. 99% of people watching this, they're probably like, what are you even talking about? And the other 1% of people are going to be like, oh my God, this is amazing that they do this. Um, so I really, really appreciate that they've done this. The thing that a lot of people probably aren't thinking about, and just to explain it in a little bit more detail, is if you have one product from one location, another product from another location, and they have to combine and ship, and you don't want to charge someone double shipping, the Shopify is actually going to do this. Before, you needed to use apps to use workarounds and stuff to get around this. So I really think a few people are really, really going to like this uh, and just remove that sort of app. All right, so the next one a lot of people might really appreciate, more logistics partners and in admin reporting. So this is sometimes an issue depending on where you are in the world and stuff with your shipping and stuff like that. So I think this one is going to be really good as well. All right, so this one, refund to store credit. So I think there's a lot of fashion businesses that are going to love this one. Issue refunds as store credit directly into the admin regardless of the original payment method. Oh, so many people, I'm sure if some people have had this issue, and they've made it this far in the video, they're going to be literally just cheering right now. But sometimes this will be a little bit of an issue. Uh, so I really like how, because the different payments and stuff, that's what the issue is sometimes. So it looks like they've just made this process so much easier with a, with a store credit and stuff like that. I think straight after I make this video, I'm going to email one of, my, one of our clients and be like, hey, uh, did you see this? So I think that'd be really good. Let me know in the comments if, what you think about a lot of this stuff too. All right, so this one's interesting. Hopefully they roll it out in Australia. So tap to pay on mobile, accept uh, counterless payments directly on your phone now. That tap to pay has expanded from POS to Shopify mobile app, US only. Sad face from me, I'm in Australia. A lot of my clients are in Australia too, even though we work with people all around the world. But like most things, I'm positive that they're going to roll this out in the US and then they're going to expand to other countries and stuff like that to all the major countries and then probably um, like the next tier of countries and stuff like that. But I really like this. Like if you go to markets and stuff, like just on the Shopify mobile app, it would just be so much easier sort of thing. Just to use your phone. Even if you had a store, you can just have a phone, accept the payment, don't even have to go to the counter. That sounds like it'd be really good. Streamline navigation on mobile, navigate. Shopify mobile app with fewer taps, clearer menus and redesign headers. So just everything making it easier, more seamless to actually do stuff. That would probably be a pretty good one. I didn't really use the mobile app. So it's been quite a few years since I used it. So I'm not the best person to ask about that one. All right. So this one is probably a really big one, but most people are not going to really relate to this. Import data from more platforms. So upload CSVs. To easily import your products, customers, inventory from platforms such as Square, WooCommerce, Etsy, Wix, uh, Wix Amazon, eBay, Clover, and Lightspeed, R and X series. Okay, cool. So we've done a lot of migrations from other platforms and stuff. If, you're migra if you want to migrate from another platform to Shopify, reach out to me and I'll do like a 
uh, I'll give you some tips and stuff for going over to Shopify. Because there's a couple of things you got to be worried about when you do that. Um, just little things, like as long as you do them properly, that's good. But I really appreciate this because we've had some issues with this. So good thing, but one of our clients actually wanted to move over like 70,000 products to Shopify and it wasn't on any of those platforms. It was a, ma it was a massive nightmare, to be honest. And just up improving these little tiny things that 99% of people are never going to even notice sort of thing. I really appreciate just making it a little bit easier and stuff like that. I'm sure a lot of people are going to really appreciate this as well. And the thing is like, it can be a daunting task to move from one platform to another. So if you try, if you try to remove this daunting task, it'd be really good. We normally also use lit extensions. So if you want some information about that, shoot me an uh, email as well, because normally I have really good relationship with it, those guys. So normally if I send them the like the person or whatever, they'll get like senior developers and stuff onto it. So yeah, if you ever want to do this, reach out and I'll give you some tips and things like that. All right, so this section here is really for developers of apps and stuff. So I'm just going to basically just skip through this. All right, so I guess we're finished on summer 2025. What was your favorite thing? What did you really like about this? Let me know in the comments. And like always, I have a free school community for the first 500 people. So if you click through, I can teach you all this stuff for free. Uh, and if you want a free video review of your website, uh, there's a link below. I'll give you tips and suggestions on how to improve your conversion. Completely free. A lot of the ideas I go through on those videos have helped generate hundreds of millions of dollars for my clients. So check that out and talk soon.